Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Petra's Happy Place. My name is Petra, and what I do here um, sometimes in the morning, I used to say every weekday, but it hasn't been every weekday, and I apologize for that, but things happen. <laughs> Life happens, and I'm not always able to get on. I should realize this. Anyway, it is the day before Thanksgiving. Can you believe it? It is the 24th of November, and um, I wanted to come this morning and share some thoughts on a psalm that I was reading this morning, and um, I hope that you would enjoy something Thanksgiving-y, <laughs> something about Thanksgiving. <laughs> um and let's start with a word of prayer, and then we'll get right into it, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and your mercies. Thank you for loving us and caring for us and um, and never leaving our side, Lord. Thank you so much. Our spirits want to cry out to you all the time because you are so good. You're so amazing. You're loving. You're caring. But you are also just and fair. and and um, and, and I'm so thankful for all of the characteristics that you show, everything that you are, everything that you do. Thank you so much. I ask that you would bless our time together this morning and that those within the hearing of the sound of my voice will be somehow blessed and encouraged by your word. I ask all these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Okay. While I was just now praying, the Lord called to my mind that I need to talk about Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay, when I when my kids were very young, I used to homeschool them, and we did an amazing little study. Um, I call it a study. It was like a unit study on uh, the pilgrims. Okay, and Thanksgiving. Now, I I want to I want to take you all back to a time in history that is so foreign to us today that we just have a very difficult time understanding it. But um, in the very beginning of this country, okay, of the United States, that's where I'm in. <laughs> that's where I live. I live in the United States. Um, at the beginning of this country. There, there was a group of people that came to this, to this new world, and I want us to picture this. They had been on a boat for months. Many of them got sick, and they started off, I, I cannot remember the number, but th there was quite a few people who had come over on this boat, and um, they, they were so, so excited and just have this longing in their heart to be in a country where they could worship God. I want us to think about that for just a minute. How far would you be willing to go either physically or, or mentally? emotionally, fill in the blank, to break free of a people, of a people group, or whatever you want to say, that says you cannot worship. You cannot worship the way you want to. So they came over to the United or to America, and while there, they learned that this place, that this new land that they were in, was so incredibly difficult. Yes, they were free to worship, and they did, and worship they did. They they had their their time together with God. They they um had church, okay? They might not have had an actual building, but I tell you what, one of the very first buildings that they built 
was a church. They built a, a town, like a, a hall, if you will. And in that great hall, that is where they did everything together. And then they built a church. Okay. Those two buildings were the very first two buildings to be erected. Now, that should tell us a lot about what their priorities were, okay? But in the course of this first year that they were here in America, disease hit. They, they got very ill and died. They lost, if I'm not mistaken, half of the people that came over. Think about that. That they came over, they didn't care if they were going to die. They just did not want to be in that place again. They, God was so important to them. God was so important to them, beloved, that they would be willing to risk their lives to find something, some place where they could worship him freely. That blows my mind, okay? That blows my mind. When they had the traditional first Christmas, or excuse me, first Thanksgiving, what were they thanking God for? Come on, guys. What were they thanking God for? That he allowed half of them to be killed, that that the crops failed, that things happened, that people die. I mean... What were they going to be thankful for? They had everything to be thankful for, beloved. Everything. I, I'm, I'm ashamed sometimes when I think about what I complain about. <laughs> yes, yes. What are some things we complain about? <laughs> uh, but when they had the very first Thanksgiving, they didn't call it Thanksgiving necessarily, okay? They, but it was a time of thanks, okay? But they invited their new friends, which were the Native Americans. They invited them, and that wasn't easy, beloved. It, it, Read, read true history books, true history books, okay? It was not easy to ask these people, this new people that they had difficulties with to come to their place where they were going to be have, serving up this big meal. Now, the Native Americans did bring some foods, some of their foods, um, and then the pilgrims had made their own food, and they came and celebrated together. Now, they celebrated the fact that they were still alive. They celebrated the fact that God was good. Okay. That's a quick summary. Now, <laughs> I want to go into, um, I want to talk about Psalm 138. Now, um, I know that this is going to run a little bit long. And um, if, if you want to stop the video now and then maybe watch the rest of it tomorrow, you can do that because that's going to be on Thanksgiving. But either one, whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read all of Psalm 138, and then I'm going to go back and hit some key points, okay? So Psalm 138, a thankful heart. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing your praise before the heavenly beings. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your constant love and truth. You have exalted your name and your promise above everything else. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased strength within me. 
All the kings on earth will give you thanks, O Lord, when they hear what you have promised. They will sing to the Lord's ways, for the Lord's glory is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he takes note of the humble, but he knows the haughty from a distance. If I walk into the thick of danger, you will preserve my life from the anger of my enemies. You will extend your hand, your right hand will save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not abandon the work of your hands. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this, like, bring it, bring it home. Let's bring it home. Okay, um, first of all, let's remember to take into context where David, he is the um, author of this, where he is. He doesn't live in 2021. <laughs> he, he lived a long time ago. <laughs> So we have to take that into consideration, okay? So in verse one, it says, I will give you thanks with all my heart. Okay, what, what does that mean? It means your whole heart, everything, everything that you have and everything that you are. He gave thanks to God wholeheartedly. If we, if we are thanking God, for X, Y, Z, but in the back of our, our minds or in the back of our heart, we are thinking about, oh, that gift was really cool. I like that gift. That was really, really cool. And we forget about the one who gave it to us, right? We're not giving thanks wholeheartedly. We're not using our whole heart, right? Okay, so we need to remember to give thanks wholeheartedly with all of our heart. And it also says, I will sing your praise before the heavenly beings. Okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, uh, now I, I'm, not, I'm not a scholar. I'm not a biblical scholar. I don't know for sure, but I want us to think about in this day, in where, when um, David is writing this, there were other gods, little go, little G gods, right? All these little things that people would worship, right? The little idols, if you will. That's the word, idol, okay? Um, if we are, if we have idols in our lives, and beloved, we have them, we have them. Anything that takes priority over God is going to be an idol. If we are praising whatever for whatever, you know, I'm not even going to go there because you all know what an idol is, correct? Okay. He's saying, David is saying in here that he is going to praise God in front of all those beings, those, those heavenly beings. Okay. It, that's likely what he was meaning. Okay. Um, so are we praising God in front of all of those idols in our lives? Are we putting him above everything and praising him and just declaring it out loud? Thank you, Lord. You are so good. I can, my mind can't even wrap around how good and gracious and loving and kind and everything you are. If we're still thinking about whatever, we can't have our mind fully on God. God doesn't want to share. Beloved, that's, that's, that's his prerogative. He doesn't want to share. He doesn't want to share the throne. And he, and rightfully so. He shouldn't have to share the throne. He won't share it with anything. Keep that in mind, okay? So we need to be thanking God in front of everything, whatever it is, okay? If you want to think, okay, David's talking about heavenly beings, meaning angels. Okay. Are we singing loud enough? Are we 
praising God loud enough so that those heavenly beings will know that we are praising God? That's another way to look at it, okay? All right, so let's go down to uh, verse 3. It says, I will bow, what, is it 3? No, 2. <laughs> verse 2, um, I will bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your constant love and truth. So, we need to be praising God for his constant love and truth. Constant, all the time, love, all the time, truth. Okay, so to, in today's language, let's turn that truth into justice. Okay, now I haven't, like I said, I haven't done my research on that, but I believe that we need to be thanking God for his justice as much as we thank God for his love. God is, is all love, but he's also all just. Okay. He can't be in either or God. He's all of both. So when we thank God for his love and his loving kindness and all the goodness that he bestows on us, we also need to be thankful for his justice. That means that we need to thank him that he doesn't allow sin. He doesn't want sin. He cannot see sin and that he needs to punish sinful behavior. We need to thank him for that because without his justice, without his justice, we really don't understand love, do we? Hmm. Food for thought, but we need to thank him for that. Okay. Now in, uh, let's see here. In verse, do, 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 verse three, on the day I called, you answered me. You increased strength within me. So we need to thank God for answering our prayers and for hearing us. Amen. Can you imagine living a life where we're talking and talking, and talking to a person and that person just never hears us? That would be awful. That would be terrible. But what I like, what, what David says, you increased strength within me. What I like about that is I can thank God that when he listens to me, that encourages me and gives me inner strength. Just to know that he listens to me gives me the courage I need to go and do this or that or that yonder, right? It, to know that God, God is listening to little bitty old me. Do we thank God for that? Beloved, are we like just so enthralled with thanks and praise that God is is God. He, he created the universe, beloved. He created the heavens. There's an S at the end of heavens. All kinds of heavens. He created everything with the sound of his voice. And yet he listens to me and he listens to you. Wow. That should bring us to our knees that should bring tears to our eyes to know that God loves me, that he loves you, and he listens to you. That should give me like, God listens to me. He cares about me when I'm crying because I feel so alone, and he listens to me. I can have the courage to go out and talk to so-and-so or say so-and-so or invite so-and-so to church or invite so-and-so over to have a meal with me. You know, whatever it is, you know, I'm just filling in the blanks there. Okay, so let's go on. Let's go on. Are we thanking God for these things, beloved? Okay, so um, this, this next part. Whew. Okay, so it says here in verse four and five, 
All the kings on earth will give you thanks, Lord, when they hear what you have promised. They will sing of the Lord's ways, for the Lord's glory is great. Okay, now we know there are many kings, leaders, presidents, whatever, whatever of any country around this world, governors, you know, lieutenant governors, whatever you want to call them, that don't necessarily listen to God. But David says, all the kings on earth will give you thanks. What gives me courage, uh, what gives me reason to be thankful is, is this very thought. Jesus said, or was it Jesus? I can't remember, okay? But the scripture says, there will be a day when every, every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every single person, whether they are the lowliest beggar or the biggest king, prince, whatever in the world, in the world, will bow at the name of Jesus. Everyone. So I believe what David is saying here, all the kings on earth will give you thanks, Lord, when they hear what you have promised. He promises. He, pro he promised he was going to sit at the right hand of God the Father. Did he not? That's what he promised. And he is going to fulfill his promise. He is fulfilling God's promise. And every knee, every knee of every king and every person will one day, whether on this earth or in the one to come, or he's going to bow their knee to God. A Man, oh, I was, oh, that gives me excitement. That's exciting to know, you know. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, let, let's see here. Oh, I like this one too. Though the Lord is exalted, he takes note of the humble. You know, beloved, that gives me so much hope that I can thank him that he is high above everything. And yet when I humble myself and I come before God humbly, he takes note. He sees me. He's going, look, Petra's saying my name. I'm going to cry. <laughs> this is happy tears. Lord, I need to be thankful for that. Thank you, God, that you in heaven, that you are exalted above everything. Take note of the humble. Amen. Amen. Okay. Ooh, here we go. If I walk into the thick of danger, you'll preserve my life from the anger of my enemies. He's going to protect us, everybody. He is going to protect us. when we, we can be thankful even in advance. Thank you, God, that no matter what happens to me in, in the future, that you are going to protect me, that your hand is over my life and you're protecting me from the enemy that's, that seeks to destroy me. You're going to protect me. Amen. Okay. Um, ooh, let's see here. What else? Thank him for fulfilling his purpose for me. Look here. Verse 8, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. It doesn't say that, that we're going to be able to do everything. Okay, it says he will fulfill his purpose for me. He has a purpose for me. He has a purpose for you. And if nothing else, if he doesn't reveal anything else to you, what his purpose is for, it's to love him, serve him, praise him, thank him, exalt him. When we do that, we're fulfilling our purpose because he's God. He's God. 
<sighs> and he's going to do that. We need to thank him for that. Thank him. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to fulfill your, 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 your will for me. You know what you've created me for, and you are going to fulfill it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Okay. And then, uh, let's see here. Uh, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not abandon the work of your hands. His love is eternal. It's always been and it always will be. Thank you, Lord, that it never, never ends. Thank you that no matter how bad I get, your, you, your love is forever. Your love is there. Whether I think something badly about so-and-so, you love me. Whether so-and-so is doing such and such, you love them. You, you love, you love, you love, your love never ends ever. Thank you, Lord. What are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Are you thankful for something that the Lord is working in your life? Are you thankful for the freedom to be able to worship? That's one of the biggest things, beloved, that I have, I take issue with. Because so many countries in this world have the freedom to worship God and to be thankful. And yet we take that day that well, in the United States, it's set aside, not in every country. Okay, I, I realize that. But take the time, take the day. It's one day to be thankful. We should be thankful every day. But one day to celebrate. Let's celebrate all the things that we're thankful for. Let's celebrate. Let's make it a celebration of everything that we're thankful to God. Do it. Shout his Shout your thanks and your praise above all heavenly beings. Wouldn't that be amazing if everybody at the same time was like, thank you, God, and really meant it at the same time? <gasps> oh, I wonder how loud it would be. Wow. Yikes. Ouch. Pinprick. Okay. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day of thanks, Thanksgiving. Remember to be thankful every day. And I hope that reading Psalm 138 has somehow brought to mind some things that you can be thankful for this Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.